in, in a space like this, one size doesn't fit all. The word sp strategy comes from the Greek root strategos, uh, the art of the general, general of a, an army. And uh, in, in historical times, you, you would know that generals put themselves in the front line. They would lead. They would put themselves in harm's way. So I say today, you know, when we talk about strat strategos, uh, the real general, the true real general of historical times, he is not a man uh, with medals and ribbons showing great elan and flair. He's actually a very lonely man. He sits alone at night in his tent, thinking most of all about the shoes of his soldiers, whether they had holes in them. That is the real general. But today, our generals sit in ergonomically designed chairs in Texas, calling in a drone strike in Iraq or somewhere in the Middle East or Syria. They are not the generals. They're playing games. And in many ways, that is what's happened to this balkanized animal rights, animal welfare movement. We've got these cyber warriors. We've got these new CEOs, real activists, the people I spend my time with and I love and I invest my time, my energy, my money, my dreams, my hopes, the rest of my life. Those people, they punch above the weight in, their, in boxes. You know, they punch above their weight class. A, a lightweight is fighting a middleweight or a heavyweight. That's what these guys are. They punch above their weight. But the CEOs of some of these NGOs that uh, I see from time to time, they punch a clock. They start at nine, they go home at five. I did something every single day. I never had a day off in uh, 27 years, not one day off. And that kind of emotional, intellectual, moral energy is, is valuable. And activists need to possess that and, and not, as I say, punch a clock and try to keep their jobs. And there are too many of them around. I, I could name them and one day I will, but there are too many of them. On the other hand, there are some wonderful young activists coming through, and people, and you're one. You know, you're you're a perfect exemplar of a new breed, which is why, in the last since I got to hear about you in the last four or five weeks, I've taken a particular interest in promoting everything you do, because there are people like you. I think I want to, whatever little I've got to offer you to my network or my information, whatever. I'm more than happy to share. Because one of the messages I try to give to activists and to people generally, the human species, is this. There is nothing we can't achieve if we don't care who gets the credit for it. I do agree with you. I loved when you said that you haven't had a single day off. Because I think when you are in the right place, you don't need a day off. There is no time to take, take a no. day off. It's not. This is not a movement of eight to five. What gets you out of bed every, every day? What is the first thing you think of? I think, uh, as you know, my wife has been very gravely ill for the last six years, and much of that time in a cancer hospital. So every day is a blessing for me. And uh, I just know that there's so much, I can't call it work, there, there are so many things that I, I have to do. I know I never get tired. And I, I, I think there's a certain degree, if you like, I'm trying to think of the guy's name, he, he, uh, Earthling Ed. Have you heard of Earthling Ed? He came, to, he came from England last week to my house. And then I took him out to have a look at some of the projects. And I was, I was talking about Kamu, uh, that's um, in, the, in the middle, to return to Tipasa. Um, he says that uh, even in the depths of winter, inside my heart, uh, there gleams a little spark of eternal summer. And in a sense, that's, that's how I feel. I look for the little spark. And of course, I do have my bad moments. You know, you asked, what will I tell? What will I do for young people? Uh, who, if I want to galvanize them into action, we can't get touch on that if it, we have time. But energizing people is and myself is actually a hard thing to do when I'm feeling down, having seen something terrible, and I see a lot of terrible things. But I then think about how bad it is for that animal in the slaughterhouse or in the dairy or in the section laboratories, all of which I have seen. And all my problems just fade into insignificance in comparison. And I bound out of bed. I'm like, a, as Ben Johnson said, you know, like a lion refreshed, ready to take on the world. You know, so I'm fortunate in that in that respect. Um, in the limited time I've got left in life, I'm, I'm willing to throw a left hook, a right cross, and an uppercut, even as I'm going down. How many hours do you quote unquote work a day? I'm unemployed, I guess, on that on, by that definition. 
because I don't actually work as such, but uh, I'm, I'm not a good sleeper. So I sleep about four hours a, a night. But I also have to be alert to my wife, obviously. So I, I but even when I was a merchant banker, uh, I, w- I worked seven days a week, and a part, I only took leave when it, because it was compulsory under Australian law. But even on those trips, I would go and do something. I'd do some study or I'd do something along those lines. I always used to joke that the chairman gave me a bonus every year without even knowing it. Uh, he gave me uh, the keys to the building, and I could come into, into the bank headquarters any time, day or night. And I did. And if I was working on a takeover, for example, I'd some nights I wouldn't go home at all. I'd work through the night because I, I enjoyed the work, and uh, there was no other place I'd rather be. And uh, I think that's an important for the young people. It's very hard to do things in a sterile environment. But I've had been, but pre-COVID, every year I would take a whole bunch of activists to invest, to look at some of my projects in other countries. So I take people from Australia and Sweden and the United States, for example, to India, and do a big sweep for a month and look at, look at all the projects. And that energized them more than you can imagine. But for us, when you just think about, you know, in China, 5,000 magnificent moon bears. Their limbs are torn off in lake hole traps, are imprisoned in steel coffins welded shut, and a catheter drains bile into a bucket, which the Chinese drink. The bears go insane. In Korea, dogs have been to death in the marketplace because the Koreans believe that pain and suffering makes the meat tasty. In my own country, in Australia, 90 million kangaroos were butchered, and they were on our national coat of arms, on our flag, that they are animals. Our live animal export industry to the, to the Middle East and to Indonesia. Uh, every penny I invested in the Basitine slaughterhouses was utterly wasted. They still continue to stab out the eyes of the animals and slash their tendons. Every penny wasted. I'm, I often say, you know, to, to people when they argue with me, come with me on one of my project trips. Spend a month with me. I guarantee you, you'll be a different person at the end. Then come and argue with me. If you'd seen what I'd seen, you'd be just like me. I'm a prisoner of what I know. I'm a victim of what I've seen. I can't change. I won't change. I'll never change. I'm going to become worse. And that is a fact. I'm, I'm not a natural, a natural performer. I, I'm, I'm not a natural public speaker. I'm not good at it. I just have to do it. But people talk that I did a debate about many years ago, 15 years ago, maybe. I'd never been in a debate before. And now I understand it's had, what, 50-something million views or something like that, and it's been translated into 20 languages. But I'd never been in in that debate before. And I felt very, very uncomfortable. So uh, I think uh, I've I've learned to make the best with what I've got and stumble my way through life without making too much of a fool of myself. I love that you said that. This is what I keep telling people that I'm an introvert. The last thing I want to do is to do public speaking, be in front of people. But I keep the, I open my presentations that I'm putting myself out of my comfort zone by being here. And I want to do the same thing with, with you because only when we are out of our comfort zone, we can get things done. And I love, I just, I, I'm, I'm going to end this soon, but I just want to say that I appreciate so much when you say, it's uncomfortable, but I do it because you're not doing it to find something that is comfortable because otherwise you would be in bed. You're doing it because you know that it needs to be done. It was uncomfortable. It was new to you to do a debate. I'm sure you had fear. You, you were, uh, you had concerns, but you did it anyways because you just need. You, you knew that it had to be done, and you did it. And I, that's that's a new advice I'm trying to give people that don't pursue jobs or careers that you think you just love to do because if you love it, but it doesn't have the impact that is satisfactory, you're just gonna be miserable. Sometimes I do a lot of things that I don't like to do, such as fundraising, I never saw it in myself, just do fundraising and asking for money or writing grants. These are not things that I love to do, but I know I have to do it because there is a higher purpose and I can't be happier.